All right, let's take this part and make a drawing of it. So, before I do that, you want to hide all your measurements. We want to hide our local axis by opening that and putting that in hide. Under the tab view, ISO view, fit all in and save it just like this. So we hit the save command. No, I didn't rename that yet. You gotta rename that. Oh, shoot. So we gotta go to this part here and rename this. This is my part number. So I'm going to right click on the very top collector and go to properties and we'll change the name and when I change the name the tab on the top should match. So we'll paste that new name in there and hit OK. The name in the top collector changes as well as up here in the top tab. These are the same. So if I were to go save this and I were to go look for it, this is what I'm looking for, okay? Oh, shoot. I made a mistake. This, under properties, is the part. And the part should be named P for part. Oh, shoot. This is the part. Now this is P for part, okay? That's the name of the drawing, but I forgot to identify the name of the part number. So in part design, just to distinguish the two, I'm going to call it part number, and the D will stand for P and everything must be caps and the drawing number D will stand for draw. Let's hit save. We're going to create a new drawing now. Actually we're not going to create a new drawing. In the previous demo you saw how to insert a drawing border we got to save this, so I'm going to right-click Properties, and we'll paste that name in there. You'll see this name changes in both locations. The D is for drawing, and the P is for part. Okay. And what we're going to do now is create a view. So I've, done, I've inserted the border. Now we're going to insert views. I'm going to go to... view layout and I'm going to try and create the front view. So you have front view, projective view, and ISO view. And we'll try and do these three. I'm going to do a front view and you pick the tab that has the part in it. So click on the part that has a tab, pick the front face of the part, and if I zoom down a bit you'll see it inserted it in the center of the drawing. You can grab this green line if you want and kind of move it over here to the side. I'll move it right about there. And I'll select anywhere on it and it will accept that and actually make a drawing of it. Now, you may have something wrong with your preferences. You can still work around it. If all of a sudden you can't do anything, you can't edit. Watch for this here update command. Okay, so you can click on the update, or you can, if it has little yellow sync marks on it or something, somehow it needs to be updated. You just simply right click on it, and then you'll hit the update command if it's available. Mine does not need to be updated. Okay, so I don't see the update command showing up, but if it does need to be updated, it'll, it'll show up there. Okay. All right, so that's how you insert a view. 
Now, if I want to insert a side view and a top view, I can do that. The trick to that is project. Now, you notice that project wasn't even anything I could select. That's because you can't project a view until you have the front view in there. I don't call that the front view. I will refer to that as the primary view. Without a primary view, I can't project a principal view. A principal view is simply a secondary view coming from the primary view. At this point, you need to read Unit 5 in the print reading book to get more clarification on orthographic views. An orthographic view is simply a 90 degree, 90 degree projection, as you see in the picture, of that view. So if I do a projection and I put my cursor here, it's looking at the right side of that part as if I were standing on the right side and looking directly at it. If I put my cursor over here, it's on the left side, this is the top, and this is the bottom view. So if I put my cursor here and click a position, it gives me a side view. Again, if I go uh, to project, I could put my cursor anywhere above that and just click a position. And it'll create your three orthographic views. This view is known as the front view. This view is the top view. And this view over here is the right side view. I won't call them that. I will call them primary view and principal views. One last view to create is your isometric view. I'll click on this and find the isometric view. Click on the part. Click anywhere here. Whatever orientation you have that in is going to be the orientation that shows up. So I'm just going to go ahead and slide that over here and click a position. And you've just created your isometric view. All right. Those are the three main views you need to learn how to create. Again, that's these three views. The front view will be your first view you generate. The side top views are your projected views. The isometric view is the 3D view in the same orientation as you have it here. Since it's going to be in the same orientation as here, you must always hit ISO view, fit all in, and then do your, your drawing of that. If I get this all cattywampus like that, and I come back to my drawing, and I try and insert an isometric view, and I go back over here, and this is this is all awkward like that. When I hit that face, it's taking a snapshot of it in that orientation. Did I not? Let's see. ISO view. Click the drawing part. Click anywhere over here. That's the snapshot it's taken it in. So now it's looking at it at a weird orientation. Now, if you create an ISO view and it came out wrong, it's no big deal. On the specification tree, the last one I created, I don't want. I simply right-click on the specification tree and hit delete, and it will remove that view. All right. And that is how you create your orthographic views.